Okay guys, Luke Driessen from Holland and I'm uh, going to talk about cows. I love cows. How about you? Who loves cows? Hands up. Who loves cows? Wow. Okay, well, one more test because I want to know who's in the room. Can you all stand up for one second? One, one minute. Just stand up, everybody. I want to know who's in the room. So the quickest scoring is I want to ask all the dairy farmers from Scotland to sit down. All the Scottish dairy farmers. Can they sit down? Not that many as I thought. Okay, that's 20 of them. Can all the, the English dairy farmers sit down? All the English dairy farmers? All right, that's quite a man. The, what about the Welsh dairy farms? Can they sit down as well? And what about the Irish dairy farms? Only 10 Wales, eh, about five Irish. So now I, ha I have a few people left. So who would that be? Uh, who's advisor? Uh, who's like feed advisor? Can all the feed advisors sit down? That's about 10 of them. Any vets in the room? Can they sit down, please, the vets? Another six, seven only, and now it's getting difficult. Who is from CMAX? Can they sit down, please? CMAX guys. Yeah, another five, six, seven. Okay, who's from universities? Uh, professors. Okay, any, any uh, independent consultants can sit down? Now you have a few people left. Who works for the government? Who's paid by the government? Okay, now it's going to be tough. So what are you doing? You're a journalist. Oh, all the journalists, please. Can all the journalists sit down? Aha. We're getting somewhere. So now I have to ask you, what do you do? Milk processor. Milk processor. Okay, can all the milk processors sit down? Ah, that's the last batch over there. What are you doing? Accountant. Accountant. I forgot, I forgot the accountant. Let the accountant sit down as well. The guys from the money. There's only two of them. And now we have a few left. So what are you doing? Uh, analysts. analysts. Okay, can all the analysts sit down as well? Thank you very much. What do you do? You are a dairy farm from Hungary. Okay, sit down. Excellent. Bravo. <laughs> we got three more people standing. What do you do? Auctioneer. Auctioneer, thank you. You might sit down. And you? What's that? Ah, equipment, of course. The equipment uh, sellers or barn designers. Can they sit down as well? And the last one? Bank manager. Bank manager. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is the bank manager. Please sit down. And the very last one, my lady. In, ah, motivate and change. Well, that's what I do. People signals and motivate people. So thank you. You were the last one. I was raised on a dairy farm in, uh, born on a dairy farm in, uh, in, in Luxembourg from Dutch parents. And then I came to the, um, back to Holland and my dad started a sheep farm. And when I was about 10 years old, my dad said, come on, Joop, you have to help me because you have nice small hands. So come help me and do the delivery and this, and this, I can't get in, so you have to do it. So I was 10 years old, sitting with my knees in the straw pack and doing the delivery. And then I was, whoa, what's happening in there? And getting a baby out, not a baby out. And then, wow, great feeling. Everybody's happy. I think, hey, I'm 10 years old. I'm a vet already. <laughs> so I was standing up. Mom was proud, dad was proud, everybody happy, sheep happy, lambs happy. And I was standing up and I was looking at my knees. I had two wet knees. And then my mom said, Hey, Joop, you should put more straw in there to my dad. My mom and dad, little discussion, you know how it goes. You should put more straw in there. My mom was taking care of the baby lambs. And she also took care of the family, four kids. She's a nurse. And she said, you have to put more straw in there. And my dad said, no, 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 it's just enough. We still have to make money. And my dad was an agricultural uh, engineer from Wageningen University, studying agricultural economics. And he knew what to do. He was always in the top 5% of dairy farm incomes. So he was a successful farmer. And my mom was a nurse. And that dilemma between my mom and my dad, that all came in me. You know how it works with genetics, huh? 50-50. So I was a bit taking care and a bit on the money. And I'm still there. I want to take care of cows and I want to also make it economically um, happening. So that dilemma between my mom and my dad is probably the biggest dilemma in the whole industry. Probably everybody of you have that dilemma here today. What can I, can I invest? <laughs> what can I afford to do for the cow? And how, how much money uh, will I have on the end? And most farms in the world tell me always, I have no time and I have no money. I say, well, what does that mean? What are you going to do? You have to do something different. Squaring the circle. And the moment you square the circle, you have to take the edges off again because you're going back to the circle. You, you circle the square. You have to keep moving. You have to keep moving and changing. And if you just don't change, nothing will happen. So, of course, I went to vet school. 
I met Jan Hulse. Jan Hulse is the famous author of all our 10 books. We have cow sickles books in uh, 35 languages now all over the world spread. And we're very proud of that. It's really happening now. We're we in 66 countries active with, with telling farmers, showing farmers how to look at their cows and how to do things better. And this cow is pretty smart. It's Els. Els was our first cow and she was actually reading the book. You should try this. Do try this at home. Who has the cow sales books? Quick hand sh hands up. Uh, only 10%. There's a big market here, I think. <laughs> so, um, after vet school, I went to the practice. And then I walked by this cow. And this cow was trying to tell us something. And I never saw her. I just walked by to do the, to do the, the, the dirty uterus or to do the injection or uh, do the vaccination. I was always busy doing work on farm, mainly curing sick cows. But I was brought up, I was educated in Utrecht, Utrecht University, to, to, to prevent disease. Not to work with sick cows only, but still, 80% of my job was treating sick cows. And I was passing this cow many, many times. And you know what she was telling me? Suddenly I stopped and I was listening to her. You know what she said? Yeah, that's what she was looking for. And she said, help me. Help me. Something is not right. This cow changed my career. I went away from, from, from vet practice. I, I started cow signals. And we started workshops on farm to make people see the 10 signals on this, on this cow. So now you got one minute to talk with your uh, colleagues on the table. And how quickly can you score the 10 signals on this, in this cow? You got one minute. Go, everybody. Talk to your neighbors and explain to each other what you see. And what are the three major signals? Tell each other. I've got a little note for you. You can study it here. <laughs> A little package. You are. Happy cow guards. So ten signals, guys. Come on, you have to discuss. You have them all. So what are these 10 signals? Time is up. What's signal number one? What's the first signal you've seen on this cow? Ears, ears down. Ears down. What else? Rumen fill. fill. Two very important signals. Look at the head, look at the eyes, look at the ears. Ears down, rumen fill. What else? Depressed. She's depressed. She's also lame. Very good. And a lot of people don't see that. They don't see the lameness on this cow. Which leg? Back left. If you look carefully, you can see it, but you have to look carefully. You have to look at... Most people look at the backbone, but the backbone is, is, is flat. So if you have an infectious disease on the, on the legs, normally she's like digital uh, dermatitis, mortalero, she only lifts up this feet like this. But this is the essential trouble, is this lameness on this cow, and that's why all the other signals are there. What else do you see? What else? Hog damage, there's some wounded hogs here. Yeah, what else? A lump on the back, so wounds on the backbone, you see the little backbone, damage. So, ears are hanging, deep, eye, deep eyes, anything else? The skin, a bit dull. She has a bad hair day, you got that? Bad hair. She's, she has dull, dry skin. If you look at the eyes, the eyes are deep. This cow didn't eat and didn't drink for six hours. So we can see by the shape of the rumen fill, the danger triangle on the left side of the cow, that this cow didn't eat for the last six hours. And that is shocking because cows are supposed to eat every two hours a meal. Ten, ten meals a, a day would be the ideal ten to twelve meals. And never be empty. So this cow is telling the whole story and there's, there's more signals. You see that she's scared, can you see it? She's scared and painful, how can you see that? You mentioned depressed, eh? but she's also a bit scared. Yeah, she hurt herself on, on different places and she's standing there. We say a standing cow is your best management advisor. A standing cow is actually, um, they have no time for standing. A cow should be actively resting or eating. Every standing cow is trying to tell you something. Standing in the bed, standing in the second line at the feeding table. A standing cow is your best management advisor. 
So the tail is actually the, the, the thing, the tail signal, the fairy tail. The tail is pulled in and it shows stress on the cow. High cortisol levels. <gasps> I want to go, but I can't go because it's painful and somebody's coming too close to me. What do I do? So, Holland today, 50% of the cows are suffering. So I'm, I'm still very active in Holland, but I travel all around the world, coming to the best farms in the world. I want to share the secrets of successful dairy farming with you. But first of all, the real reality here. 50% is suffering today in Holland. Is it worse or better in the UK? If you look at the wounded cows, 30% wounded, 25% lame. If you look in a year, 50% subclinical milk fever, that means lack of calcium, lack of feed intake basically. 50% bloody soles, laminitis, and that is lack of resting time, and too much standing on concrete, and too long milking times, standing on concrete. And 30% mastitis, and that is lack of hygiene, and lack of general resistance, lack of resting time again. So if you see what the figures are, it's quite shocking. So for marketing, we had an excellent morning here. I was very excited to be here the whole morning and I still want to hear your stories tomorrow as well. But um, as a marketer, you want to be good and tell it. But you first have to be good. And now we're going to look at the UK figures and it gets a bit, a bit uh, annoying maybe for you now, a bit painful. How many cows are lame in the UK? Last figures between 31 and 29. How much about mastitis? 60%. When I check vet practices, they come to 70%. So the figures are really not good enough. And I want to challenge you, go and do what the best farmers do. So you can do better. If you've seen what I've seen, if you know what I know about dairy farming, you will not doing what you do now. You will do better. And I'm going to show you how. The cow is asking the question. The cows are always telling the truth. The cows listen to the cow, they got know-how. This cow has a big question mark on her face, you see? See the signals, it's a real cow from Norway. She's Andrea, and she's from one of my trainers in Norway. We have 350 trainers in, in, in 45 countries now doing cow signals, I'm very excited with that. But there's still a drop on the, on, the, on the plate, it's not good enough yet. But this cow is telling us, asking us the question, why? Why don't you give us what we need? It's not that difficult. We need a place to rest and we need a place to eat for all of us because we are a herd animal. And we need some space because we are a flight animal and we'd rather flight than fight. So we started workshops and this was in 1999. I did my first workshop with 10 farms in the house. It was really a big success. I said, wow, this is so good. We have to spread this all over Holland. And then it was so good after years that we have to spread this all over the world. And that's what I'm doing now, working on this mission to get these things happening. Farmers on farm judging their own cows. And um, we give them a simple concept. Look, think, act. We put the cow signals diamond in place. The cow signals diamond is feed, water, light, air, rest and space. And one side of the diamond is very cheap, right? cheap jewelry, water, light and air. So first focus on this. And then you can also focus on the expensive side. And that is rest, space and feed, what costs a fortune. But just look at these six points and just tell me, that's what we asked the 10 farmers, tell me what you see and what you think is critical here. And we say, well, uh, see, hear, feel and smell everything and look from large to little. If you see 10 cows, try to see how many have an empty rumen. Try this at home tomorrow. How many have an empty rumen? Is it 2 out of 10? Is it 3 out of 10? Oof, or is it 4 out of 10? On my best farms, it's less than 1 out of 10. And, and look how many are chewing or how many are standing. How many cows are standing in the beds? Is it one out of 10 or is it five out of 10? Standing cows cost a tremendous amount of money. We look for you knows and you knows are things that you want to see, that you want to know. It's a you know, it's an unexplained, notable observation. Something that you can see, but you really don't know what it means. So you're gonna ask it, do you know or do you know it? And then you, then you have the you know, you have to solve the you know. Why is this cow standing there? Why is she wounded? Why is there so many cows with empty rumors? What do we do wrong? What can we do better? So that's what cow signals is about, and cows will always pay you back in milk and longevity. So do something. A lot of farmers keep hanging in the thinking phase. Yeah, I should do this, but 
They wait too long. Keep on moving. Keep on trying things on your own farm. My best farms are always practicing. Um, moving 10 bats make them bigger. Putting a bar in and make 10 deep bats. See how it works. Could I manage deep bats? Is it possible for me? Let's just test 10 bats. And then you know if you can do it. If it doesn't work, you can put it back again. So try with little steps to become better. It's all about the difference between good and bad. Yeah, I've got it all um, pictured, and I said the whole, my whole career I put in one pen now, this pen, and it's the good cow and the bad cow. He wants to have it, so there you are. <laughs> so good cow, bad cow, see the difference. So you got one minute to score this farm, so now you are this farmer in the barn, and you have to find the three big improvement points in this farm. It's a traditional farm from Holland. It's a three-row barn built from the 70s till until now. People still do it. We say we have to build two-row barns because the cows can't eat. But what is the biggest problem on this farm? What are the three points that you like to improve on this farm? You get one minute and talk to your neighbors. Talk with each other. What would you do? Sorry? The last one. So what would you do when this was your farm? Okay, I want to have the votes now. What would you do if it was your farm? What would you do? Make a passageway in the middle. Very good idea. The cows can hardly reach the feed. Maybe with a passageway in the middle, it's easier for them to go to the feeding table. What else? Wider passage, there's only two narrow passages of one and a half meter with a drinker. Only two drinkers in the system, 70 cows, not good enough. So wider space for the cow to move and to eat and to drink. What else? What was the big you know here? There's a big you know. Making sure they don't have to go right round the either end. Yeah, and how do you do that? Make a middle crossover, yeah. What else? Move that feeder. Move that feeder maybe, because why do you have this out of power of feeder? Yeah, what else? Yeah, get rid of the slats. Well, the slats is, is very common in Holland. Then we have the manure under the, under the cows. It's, uh, it's equally bad for hoofs as a um, closed flooring system, unless you have sand baths. Then you are a lot better off with sand baths and closed flooring systems. Although you see that the hoof issues are, uh, the, the closed floors are a bit more wet and dirty. These are a bit more clean, but they have uh, trauma on their claws. So it's, it's not the ideal system, but it's the best of both worlds. What else? There's no forage in the front, very well seen. What else? There's no cows let down. There's no cows resting. So the two critical things, the cows should eat and the cows should rest. And they're not resting and they're not eating. Only half of them. So all cows want to eat at the same time. So it's not there. So we realized after doing these workshops with farmers, they said, well, actually the big dilemma between taking care of cows and investing my cows and earning money there is no dilemma. There's only a simple answer. Taking care of cows is taking care of myself because everything we did by pushing the feet all the way to the front here that the cows can use the whole feeding table, very simple thing, and making deep beds in this barn, suddenly the cows will rest 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours instead of seven to nine hours. <coughs> so we can go from nine to 14 hours rest when we make a better bed. And that's one liter milk per extra hour resting. It's an amazing opportunity. But people think it's not, it's not worth investing in. So look at, let's look at um, breeding stock. Because why do we have so much um, trouble in the industry still, uh, disease? I think we have too many specialists. That's why I just want to find out who's in the house. It's mainly producers, a few advisors, 10%. But I think we have too many specialists. And the specialist is someone who knows more and more about less and less until he knows everything about nothing. <laughs> so I, I really value a specialist a lot, but I think you have to open your mind and become a specialist in all, and a generalist in all the fields. You have to know a little bit about breeding, feeding, housing, management, economy, and health. And if you know all these six fields, 
you can be a good coach for the farmer. So I think the farmers are lacking good coaches and there are too many specialists around. And the farmers are probably not good enough developed to get all these six items on the right position. They don't know what is, what is the most important. So they, they just value one best and that's where they have a good connection with a specialist. And then they're both walking in the wrong direction. And that's what happens on 90% of the farms in the world nowadays. And I always look at the best 10%, what are they doing? And I'm very impressed by what farm farmers do in the world. And I look at the rest 1%, and I'm really even more impressed what they do. They make everything right. How can they do it? So they have these, these cows, but they are up to 12, 13,000 liters, or in, in, in America, or in, in, in Holland, 12,000 liters with high protein, and they make it happen. But that's only 1% of the farms. So it's like having a Ferrari, beautiful car, beautiful cow, and then you only have country roads. And then you have only diesel in the tank. So how are you going to drive that Ferrari at 200 kilometers per hour? It's not going to happen. And the same happens with all our cows in Europe. We have top quality genetics, but only 1% of the farmers is doing, is giving the cows what they need. And they, they get the, the full potential out of them. So the other 99% had still a lot of potential. So I would say stop breeding, start feeding. That's not a popular thing to say on a CMAX conference, but I think we still can breed for sustainability and longevity, but we also have to do the other side, the management side. So good breeding and good management, eh, one and one is three. But the breeding is the long-term strategy, and the management is tomorrow. You can do it. Drill out all your concrete and make sand baths or, or, or deep st straw baths. It's a big improvement point. If you do that, you will have half your disease tomorrow. It's an amazing step you can make. Everybody can do it. But you, don't, you didn't do it yet, and my question is, why? Let's look. It's going to be a bit more convincing now. This is young stock. Most young stock, who of you is, is calving young stock at 24 months or younger? Who's calving them at 24 months average? Wow, that's an impressive amount. So here are the best farmers from the UK. Eh? Almost 25% of the house can say 24 months or younger. That's amazing. The best farmers are on 23 months. If they don't get sick, these young stock, then they can calve at 23 months. You just have to feed them. But it's not that difficult. If you look at our young stock signals, we made a whole video training on that. It's, it's all steps that are logic. It's just everything you do now, you do it a little bit different. It doesn't cost more money. It doesn't cost uh, uh, more time. It's just a little bit different attitude. Maybe a few tools for better cleaning buckets or making life a bit easier. So this is like my own young stock. You know, I got three kids at home. I know what they do. They eat and they shit and they don't do anything useful. So they, and that's what these, these guys do. They have two years or 28 months, average in UK, 28 months of eating and shitting. And they're just ruining the environment. So what if we can double the lifetime of cows? We only need half the young stock. That'll be 18% less greenhouse gases. A huge opportunity. For the farmer it's good, for the cow it's good. And you have less work with your young stuff because you need less of them. So there's a big opportunity there. And it's very good for the environment. So what is the productive life in UK at the moment? How long do the cows live? What do you think? In the world? How much? Two? Three? Who has, who has a lifetime of more than three years? A, a productive life, um, a lifetime production of more than 30,000 liters milk. Who can say, yes, I have that. I have them more than three years with 10,000 liters. Yeah, there's only 15 people, 20 people in the house, okay. The average in Holland now is 30,000 liters, 31,000 liters. The average out of, out of 18,000 farms with high protein and high fat. 3.4, 3.6 protein mostly. In the world, cows only live two and a half years. In England, it's 2.2. In the US, it's 1.9 years. Le lactations or years, I, I, so 1.9 years of productive life in, in, the, in the US. And the top of the bill was Sweden last year with 1.8 years. They are very good in many things, but they are very... Um, they were the last country that was signing in for cow signals. They were thinking we do everything right already. They have the, the most horrible buildings built. So there's a lot of lack of knowledge in, in all countries in the world. And I would say 90% of the farmers and their workers don't have the practical knowledge to take really good care of cows. And that is quite shocking. And that's my honest objective opinion. I work at farms all over the world. I see in Holland we have 3.5 years of production now. 
and we have 31,000 liters. But what do we see on the best 1% farms? It's five years. So we checked 30 farms out of 3,000. They were all about 47,000 liters. So the average was more than more than 50,000. More than uh, there was actually more than 50,000 liters of, of um, uh, production. So between 50 and 60,000 liters. And one of my guys, we, we built him a new barn, and he's now. On, I show you a video later. He was actually on 67,000 liters last year. He killed only 17 cows out of 130. Wow, that was his replacement that year. And they were all having a lifetime production of 67,000 liters. So, yes, it's possible. Yes, we make it happen. But you have to do a few things different. And that's why I'm here to, to share this knowledge with you. It's doubling the productive lifetime of cows. Why? Because we can. And because it has a huge impact on you, on your farm income, on, on the cow's life, and on the environment. Because just think about it, if you can keep your cows from being, prevent your cows from being lame and wounded, they will have a feed efficiency of 1.5. The average cow in the world has a feed efficiency of 1.2. So that means most farms are making 1.2 liter milk from every kilo dry matter intake, but the best farms are on 1.5, even on 1.6. Who knows he's above 1.4 liters Milk, who, can, who knows that? Who's on a feed efficiency of 1.4 or more? That making 1.4 liters of milk out of one kilo dry matter. Who's that? Hands up. Anybody knows it? A lot of people haven't calculated it, but I'm sure some of you are. But if you can prevent them from lameness, they will, they will do a better job. And it's possible, we've seen it. So let's look at the best uh, cows in Holland. This is quite an interesting sheet. I would like to ask you to take a figure in your mind between one and 11. Which lactation is the most profitable from all the 100,000 liter dairy cows in Holland? We got 23,000 dairy cows reaching 100,000 liters, doing 11 lactations of 9,000 or 10 lactations of 10,000 liters. So which lactation, which lactation number is the most profitable, is the highest? How is this curve going? So have a figure in your mind or write it down. Between 1 and 10. It's not 10, it's not 1, okay? I'll give you that. So somewhere in between. Okay, now we do a little countdown test. So who thinks it's 10? Who thinks it's 9? Stick up your hand. 8. Who thinks it's 8? 2 thinks it's 8. 7. 10 people think it's 7. Who thinks it's 6? Another 10 people. Who thinks it's 5? That's 20 people, 25. Who thinks it's uh, 4? That's the majority, I think. And who thinks it's 3? There's another 40 people. Who thinks it's 2? In America, uh, he thinks it's two. In America, it's sometimes one because the heifers are dying in the second lactation. So the first lactation is higher than the second. Can you believe it? So they just squeeze out with, with high concentrate rations, squeeze out the milk as fast as they can, and ruin the cow within one lactation. Congratulations. And that's not what the European citizen is, is like to see. You know? so, so we should do a better job. And we are more smart, we're more onto sustainability probably. I don't know what it is, but we have a different strategy. There's a different pricing behind it. So the answer is, ta-da, six, seven, and eight, and nine are almost on the same high level. So why are we ruining cows before six lactations? It's a mistake. Cows are, can, can be coming better all the time. And this is a very good survey. It took me three years to get these data from the, from the breeding company in Holland. But this is real data with real results. This is what cows can do for you. So replacing your heifer uh, after one year with a new heifer, there's a lack of 2,000 liters that you're missing. So even if the price of your culling heifer, now the, the culling cow, the price is $1,000 in America. Oh, let's replace this cow because she gives us less trouble. Yeah, if you don't take care of them. But then you replace them for a $1,000 meat, $1,000 new animal, but you lose 2,000 liters already, just like that. So if you can keep this cow, she will go up to 11. And for the scientists here, we did also a 305 production, so we see it's a bit lower, but you see that these cows actually adjust their own um, breeding time, maybe. It's interesting. Eh? So these, these cows that are um, uh, 305 days, you see they, they, they are already the fifth, six, seven lactations, and this one is... Uh, a little bit higher, so they, they have a bit of a longer lactation, these cows, because they don't get pregnant so quickly because they are producing such an amount of milk, they just wait another month. I think they are smarter than us. I think cows are smarter than us. And I hear people saying, stupid cow. Well, <laughs> there's no such thing as a stupid cow. Huh? Maybe you have to look into the mirror. She's trying to tell you something.